This episode of Torpreneur is sponsored by Fair Harbor. Fair Harbor fuels the experiences of the travel industry with the most comprehensive online reservation system available for tours, activities, and attractions. Visit fairharbor.com to see why over 15,000 businesses worldwide trust Fair Harbor to better serve their customers and increase online bookings. Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hello and welcome to episode 148 of Tourpreneur. This is the podcast where we flatten the learning curve for tour operators and travel professionals around the world. Today, we are talking all about Instagram. This is one of the most frequently asked questions we get here at Tourpreneur from many listeners who ask, how on earth do I use Instagram to promote my business? And as always with Torpreneur, I want to bring us expert opinion, but from people who work in the industry. And we've done that for you today. Let me introduce you to today's guest. Her name is Otelia Cassidy. She is the Torpreneur behind Madison Eats Food Tours. And she is doing some amazing things with her Instagram account, whether it be reels, stories, IGTV, highlights, etc. Now, if any of those terms uh, you're unfamiliar with, don't worry, because on this episode, it's Instagram for dummies for a large part, which basically means my questions about Instagram, because I don't know an awful lot about it. If you look at my own Instagram account for Torpreneur, it's not great. And that's because I don't really get it. I don't really understand it. So today we go through a lot of the basics with Otelia. And also, from you. So we asked in our Facebook group for questions and about Instagram and what your frustrations are. And we cover some of those questions with Otelia as well. As always, all the links can be found at tourpreneur.com forward slash 148. And if you enjoy today's episode, please, can you do me a favor? Can you share it on your social, maybe on your Instagram, um, share it with your peers. We're really looking to grow Tourpreneur and I can't do that without you sharing the episodes that you enjoy and you find valuable with your friends and peers. Without further ado, let's cross over to Madison, Wisconsin and Oteria Cassidy. And welcome to episode 148, Otelia Cassidy of Madison Eats Food Tours. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, no, thank you. Because one of the Most frequently asked questions that I get here at Tourpreneur headquarters is how on earth do I as a tour operator use Instagram? And I've been looking around and there's lots of Instagram experts and gurus, and I'm sure they're all fantastic at what they do. But I was specifically wanting to help flatten the learning curve by chatting with an operator such as yourself that's doing great things with Instagram. So thanks very much for coming on to Tourpreneur today. Absolutely. I'm super happy to be here and talk about one of the things I spend most of my time doing, or I should say a lot of my time doing. Brilliant. So we got a hybrid episode today. We got some questions from myself because I'll be really honest with you. I'm not an Instagram expert. And we also invited our listeners on our Facebook group for some questions as well. And what was the frustrations around Instagram. When we were chatting, you said to me that you found that tour operators seriously underutilize Instagram. What do you mean by that exactly? What I've noticed, and I think it is changing a little bit as people are becoming more comfortable with the platform, but I think what I've really noticed is that Instagram is designed to be an entertaining social platform where we're connecting to people. And what I noticed is that many tour operators are posting infrequently and the photos that they're using are not always of great quality. And also the ways that stories are utilized to kind of accentuate those photos that are in the feed aren't as engaging as they could be. I don't feel like tour operators are sort of finding it as a way to draw people into the excitement of leading a tour, which is, as we know, we all have so much passion for these businesses that we've started. 
but I don't feel like that passion is shared. And I don't feel like it's shared among the community. And that's one of the things that I think we really could do as a tour community, not just food tours, but as a tour community is to really share what we do with other people that follow us. Absolutely. And I have to say, in terms of fun, just before we came on air, I was giggling here because I saw your (laughs) Instagram post with you and your cat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's part of it. Like, I think if we think about the, the accounts that we like to follow on social media, even if we're just mindlessly scrolling, it's about things that are kind of take us away from the drudgery of our day or make us laugh, kind of give us a little bit of humor or some kind of insight. We haven't quite gotten to all the questions yet, but I think one thing that comes to mind for me that I really want to express is that it doesn't have to be something really super thought out, highly edited. The content that you post, especially I'm talking about stories, it can be really off the cuff and just random, funny, get people a little bit engaged and give them a break from, you know, (laughs) the monotony of their day. Absolutely. You know, it's quite funny with some of the stuff I've posted, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram. What kind of makes me, it's frustrating, but it's quite funny as well, as I can spend hours on one photo or one video or whatever, and like no engagement whatsoever, whereas it could be one, you know, I've just woken up and, you know, my hair's everywhere and I've taken a funny video or something just off the cuff and bang, the engagement's through the roof. But I'm sure there are lessons that we can learn as tourpreneurs here that sometimes it doesn't have to be that glossy, well-produced video. People want to see the real you, don't they? Absolutely. And that I think is one of the things I've noticed a lot. And I've been learning myself, but also encouraging other people that are other tour operators, like people want to see you, they want to know about you and the behind the scenes of your business. But also they kind of just, if you're comfortable sharing even some random behind the scenes of your own life, because then they see the sources of your inspiration and your personality. And of course, if you as a tour owner and operator are not the best at being behind the camera, maybe it's somebody else who's really connected to your company who can kind of take on some of that role as well. Absolutely. And I love those words behind the scenes, because when I looked at my personal Instagram feed, not the work one, you know, I'm following a lot of old footballers that were around when I was growing up or celebrities. And, you know, a lot of them are posting here I am, you know, making breakfast for the kids or, or and it's not. This well, I mean, there are those that are very well produced and they put a lot of evidence, don't get me wrong, but most people that I'm kind of engaging with is like, oh, wow, look at them, you know, at home, this is them or walking their dog, whatever it may be. It's getting that behind the scenes look, not the highlight reel as such, but what they're doing in their everyday life. Yeah. And I think one thing that I've heard as feedback, because sometimes I've questioned like, oh, is my Instagram too much, too personal? Or do people really want to see this? Is it like, who cares if my kids are being weird in my living room? But people do like that, you know, like they are, you have a messy house and you're doing your Zoom meeting and your kids are going crazy. People have mentioned to me that part of what they really like is that I share kind of personal anecdotes, things that I have found that inspire me to do the work I do. And also sometimes the frustrations and they relate. They're like, okay, we see what you're doing. You know, we can relate to this. Everybody's going through something right now or, you know, we see what excites you. And so it's not always specifically. And actually, I rarely on Instagram try to sell something that's I don't like when people come to me to sell things on Instagram, to be honest. If I like you and I like your content, I'm going to see what you sell. The behind the scenes for me is just like, here's my weird random life. have at it yeah i've often said this on the podcast we're all media producers now i mean yes we're tour operators and we're tourpreneurs and activity leaders and so forth but we're also you know media producers we're media operators we're creating this content for the world to consume and you're right it's not always book my tours or book my activity it's like this is what we are about so with that in mind what are three tips you would share with our listeners that have worked for you in terms of growing your followers and generating engagements. So maybe that first one is be authentic. It doesn't always have to be the well-produced, you know, expertly shot content. But what other tips would you have for creating that engagement? Yeah, absolutely. And I think kind of connected to that, what I had sort of written down when we talked about this previously, as I said, show up to stories, show your behind the scenes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, I think it shouldn't be perfect. I think showing real day-to-day content, it doesn't always have to be personal. Some people are very like, you know, don't want anybody to see inside their home and they don't want to show their family. That's fine. 
you can show up and show things that you love and that you're doing about your community or what, you know, your business or your activities that make you excited to share that with somebody. So showing up to stories and stories on Instagram are really important. I have probably shown up to stories every day for the past three years. Doesn't always have to be a lot. And sometimes it is. And I know that sounds like a lot to people. It sounds daunting. You don't have to show up every day, but it helps. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be edited. <laughs> and, and, you know, we can, you can go more into how you can make your stories more visible using hashtags and things like that, but at the base level showing up. And I did actually one little tip and I'm going to get to the other two points. If your story views go down and there was a time when Instagram changed their algorithm that story views dropped then actually you want to take a break. So I took a 24-hour break from Instagram. I didn't post to feed. I didn't go to my stories. I didn't open the app. Came back to it the next day. Maybe it was 36 hours later and it changed. Like I was back up to, I probably get 600 story views, which, you know, it's great. So yeah. it was down to like 250 and I was like, what's going on? And so I did that and it went right back up. What made you do that? What made you realize, like, just give it a break and, and see? Because, like, no one's given us a, an instruction manual here, right? Because this stuff changes so often and so frequently. Was it just instinct to say, well, I'll leave it for a day? Or was it something you'd read or you'd learned? It was something I had read. Uh -huh. And I do have connection with a lot of people in the community who do a lot of Instagram work. So sometimes we have a chat group. We're like, what's going on with the algorithm? You know, they're like, nice. oh, try this or something. So that's another reason it's good to show up to stories because you start connecting with people. Okay, so I would say engage, try to keep consistent content. Posting, so we're talking about feed and stories. My goal this month is actually to post every day. It's a lot. I have usually posted three times a week and I'm trying to show up every day. And it's interesting because it is definitely helping with my reach. And I'm kind of curious how it's going to affect any you know, other numbers. But I would say show up consistently. If you choose two times a week, choose two times a week. If you choose once a week, choose once a week, but be consistent. I agree with that. And right now, so in Wisconsin, are you leading tours? I will start leading tours in May. Okay. So no, we have been off for almost a year. Yeah, so much. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> you got interviewed. Which, is, which has made it really interesting. <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember watching it and I shouldn't because I'm just learning this whole journalism thing. I watched you on it. I think it was local TV news last year. And you were talking about obviously the travels you're experiencing and the industry. And then I think the lady asked you, so when are you going to be back leading tours? And was this like last April or something? And I'm like, how on earth are you supposed like, to hey, answer that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I had a post what my life, we're taking a break due to COVID post last March. was like, we'll see you in a couple of weeks when yeah. this blows over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe a year. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So my question then is, you're going to post every day, which is great. But how are you going about creating that content when you're not leading tours? Well, that's an interesting challenge. If I back up to prior to COVID, I still had an aesthetic in mind. In my feed was trying to post food and people having fun with or without food. So like people on my tours, for example. That was kind of my aesthetic. I would mix up food and people because that's for me resonates with what I'm trying to do. When COVID happened, obviously we weren't leading tours. So I could go back for a little while and do a throwback, you know, picture. But at some point it's like, what am I trying to share with people anymore? Because sharing things about tours that aren't happening, is kind of defeats the purpose. And you don't want to be like thinking like, oh, I wish we could do this again, you know, for too long in your social feed. So at that point I started to think about what can I share about food? What is my passion about food and my community? I mean, we're all cooking at home more during this time. I started sharing what I'm cooking. You know, I have a food blog. I have written recipes for a blog before, so it's not totally foreign to me. And not even full on recipes. Sometimes I'm like, I threw this together and I made a delicious dinner. You should try it. Well, as you might know, we started to put together meal kits in conjunction with another local company. So we didn't actually compile them. We just developed the idea and those featured a lot of small businesses that we had not worked with as tour operators. So then I started to feature their business, like their products or something about them because you know everybody's trying to survive this economic downturn. So it became about supporting my own food experiences that I was still having and my community the best way that I could. The other thing I found is that when I look at my insights 
which if you have over 100 followers, you can see your insights and it's the upper right corner of your homepage. It's the three lines that are next, you know, that are up in the upper right corner of your homepage on Instagram. You can click on insights if you have over 100 followers. And I think you might have to have a business account, but I'm not positive about that. And I could see that people really resonated with the pictures I shared of myself sort of talking about ways I was trying to stay inspired. So I also added in pictures of myself, whether it was like selfies I took at home or, you know, pictures that my daughter took of me and sort of my thoughts on being a business owner during this time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's so important, isn't it? Because we want to see the person behind the business. We want to know you. And I think a lot of tour entrepreneurs might feel a bit shy about doing that, thinking like, no, no, my tours are about the vendors. It's about the food. It's about the neighborhood. It's not about me. So it can be a challenge. Many of us are introverted when it comes to actually talking about ourselves. We can talk about our local neighborhoods till the cows come home. But when it's about ourselves, I think a lot of us struggle with that. Absolutely. And I think we have to remember that we are the reason our company and industry exists. And we're the reason people get excited learning about our communities and the food or, or the other ways that we're guiding people through our communities. Without us, these businesses wouldn't exist. So sharing those things that have inspired us is important. And if it's not a personal video or picture of, of yourself, that's okay. But I also think those things just take practice to become comfortable with as well. Yeah. And that's the other thing is not to be too self-critical, right? I mean, you know, I hate even now, oh this gosh. is episode, <laughs> episode 148 of Torpen and I still hate hearing my voice. You know, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> I, I hate watching out. myself on video when I do like an interview on, you know, TV or even my own IGTVs. I don't often watch them. I'm like, oh my God, I look like that or something. But I just post it anyway. Yeah. No, we're our own worst critics. Right. So the, and the third tip I would say is sharing content to create community. Instagram is a social site. One thing I've noticed, I follow a lot of travel bloggers, especially in the black travel community. And there is a lot of sharing among those travel influencers and bloggers of each other's content. So I think as tour guides and tour operators sharing like, did you see somebody do something super cool with a tour idea that you, you know, oh, that's super fun. Or people are traveling more now, you know, wow, if you guys are traveling to Florida, look who's doing this thing here. And then the idea is that you repost those things. So if you tag me in a post like, cool, look what Madison Eats just made for dinner. This looks amazing. Would you try this? Then I'm going to repost that and say, hey, thanks for sharing my post. And that way we're all helping each other to grow. That's an easy, easy way to grow. Absolutely. 100% agree with you. One of my frustrations, whether it's an email newsletter or it's blogs, is when someone just talks about their own service or product and company and not actually put the spotlight, or shine that spotlight on others in their community. And it could be, you know, here's a really good bar. If you're visiting Madison and you want to watch the football, this is a really, this is a cool bar or whatever it may be. I think sharing that content is important. I've sometimes struggled though on Instagram. Like I know how to retweet and how to share a Facebook message, but let's say I'm on Instagram and I see a really cool picture that you've put up on your profile. How do I go about sharing that? If it's something in my feed and my account is public, you should be able to share it to your story just by clicking what looks like an arrow or a paper airplane, the send message icon under the picture in the feed. If I click on that, as long as your account's public, I can share it to my story. If you want to share it to your feed, I use Repost app. It's an app that allows you to repost somebody else's content but it keeps their account name in the picture, like kind of like a watermark. So you have, a, you know that you're not posting original content. And then in stories, if you want somebody to share your story, you have to tag them. Right. Got you. Yeah. yeah this is something that I really need to work on because I see great posts and then I'm like, okay, how do I share this? Cause I, you know, I think it's something that I need to play around with in the app, but I, I love that point about sharing other people's content as well. And they are wins. So a couple of basic questions for you. Maybe you can deconstruct this for us. And, and some people came in with these questions as well. Could you give us basic definitions and maybe some of the differences between feed, stories, reels, and you just mentioned IGTV? So maybe if we start with the feed. So the feed, is that just that I'm posting a picture 
on my Instagram. It's not a story. It's not a reel. It's not anything fancy. It's just I've taken a picture of my dog and I want to put it up. That's it, right? That's the feed. That's the feed. The feed is what you see when you go to somebody's account. It's the grid of pictures that shows up. Got you. So I understand that one. So then we move on to stories. Can you share more about what Instagram stories are? So stories are going to show up where you see your avatar icon. And when you can tell somebody has a story to share, it's going to have sort of a highlighted circle around their icon. And the way that you add to stories is by hitting the plus button in the upper right hand corner of your homepage. So when I talked about going to your insights, it's just to the left of that, or currently it is on my phone. It's going to look like a little plus button. It allows you to choose, you know, if you want to do a post or a story or a reel. And we mentioned this, I think, before we started, but Instagram accounts look different. Sometimes Instagram rolls out different features for different accounts. So if it doesn't look exactly like this, it just look for like a plus button that's going to allow you to add to your story. It's usually in the upper right-hand corner. And the story is 24 hours long. You can archive them. And they only last, so a segment only lasts for 24 hours. Each segment is a maximum of, I think, 15 seconds. And that is something where... I look at stories as a little less polished than my feed. Well, I mean, I would say a lot less sometimes, but it's very much a day-to-day, -day, like highlight things I'm doing for work. I'll highlight personal things, what I'm making for dinner. I took a walk and that sunset looked beautiful. And I'm really glad I grabbed this moment. So that's the story. You can add tags to that to tag other accounts. If you want to, location markers, those help your visibility. But again, those things just become more of a weight on people's heads sometimes. Yeah. So we can go more into that if we want to. Reels are also, I access my reels from that same plus icon. And again, reels, some accounts have different features. I don't have some reels features that other, like now some accounts have a reel where you can split and do somebody's reel with them. I don't have that feature yet. So a reel is kind of like TikTok or Instagram. It's a 30 second short video. Instagram is really favoring reels right now. So it's encouraged to use reels. When you make a reel, what I do is I actually shoot video clips, not in Instagram so that I have them in case the video gets lost, which has happened before. It <laughs> doesn't save or my Instagram, you know, crashes. I shoot video content and sometimes I shoot way too much video content. Like when I'm making food, for example, and then I piece it together. I can clip it in the reels and it allows you to trim each segment. So then you piece together your video in, into reels. Then you can add music if you want to. And the other thing I do before I add music is if you go into reels and you've made your whole video and you go to like sort of go to done, there's gonna be a place where it's like, okay, you've finished making your whole video. There's a down button for downloading it to your phone. Do that definitely, because you don't want to waste all that work you just put in. Then it saves it to your device and you can actually upload it to other accounts like TikTok, for example. So a reel is fun. I think reels should be sort of entertaining. They're the things like if you see a fun trend on TikTok, like making those, what did I make recently that was like a TikTok trend? I think those like folded tortilla things, you know, so there's like food trends you can play with or just really anything. You can use old video clips. It's a short, entertaining video. You can have the option of showing your feed. So you want to make sure there's a part of that video that has a good graphic that's going to fit your aesthetic, or you can just save it to reels, put it in your feed. It's going to get a lot more views. So yeah, those are the main. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it, it, there is a lot, but I think you just have to play around with it. So I, I've been reading this about reels and other than doing tourpreneur, I have a couple of other podcasts and also I'm on the board of my local United Way. And one of the reasons they brought me on was because they wanted some help with digital marketing. And I'm like, okay, how can Instagram Reels help United Way? But then I thought, okay, let's just play around with it. I have another podcast about spy books and a beautiful book arrived at home from the Folio Society, beautifully illustrated. And I did kind of an unboxing of that. And it got tons of views. And then I have this very obscure podcast about German history. And I filmed something for that. And that got so much more engagement than anything else I've ever showed. It was a one effort. I really didn't know what I was doing. It looked terrible. You'd probably laugh your head off if you saw it. But still, that engagement was there. I thought, okay, there is something in this for operators or for anyone who wants to get a message across. 
Absolutely. My first reel is horrible, but you know, I've been doing them for a while. So now it's just practice and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. And now I like, I love doing transitions with kind of like makeup even. And I add that in with food and it's just playful and I enjoy it. And that's kind of key. You have to love it because you don't want to be like, I'm totally hating this now. And I was just going to say this because you mentioned that you worked with other businesses. We're lucky. We're tour operators. We naturally do things that are fun and we show off things that are, you know, interesting, like food or city views or like exploring places. I mean, we could be a business that's like trying to sell mattresses or something. And you could probably make that fun too. <laughs> you, you really could make anything fun, but like we're naturally in a fun industry. So it's already there. Yeah. It's interesting you say that. I always remember when I lived in Europe, you couldn't order them, but to blenders, will it blend videos? Do you remember those? I don't remember that one specifically, but it's making me think of like the nut chopping appliance that was being sold or like right. a shake weight or something. I mean, you can make any of this stuff And it was fun. so much fun. And I knew that brand because he would throw in like an iPhone in it and whatever, and it would blend that it was just so ridiculous that you, I remembered the brand. Exactly. I'm not suggesting any of our listeners do that, but to play around with it and <laughs> to have fun with reels. And then with stories. So you were saying it disappears after 24 hours. Is that correct? It does. However, if you have it set to save to archives, it'll be in your archives and that's how you create highlights. So that's another way. If you want to create highlights, which are those little icons that are above your feed, but below your profile picture, that's a great way actually to highlight your products. So you do have to create that in stories first. And then from your stories, you can create the highlights. Excellent. That's something that I I have not played around with, so I'm going to be doing a lot of that this weekend. You also mentioned IGTV. What's that? So those are videos that are longer than a minute. If I do an Instagram live, for example, where maybe I'm cooking something with somebody, I save it to my device and I upload it. Or actually, Instagram allows you to do it right away to save it to IGTV. Any video content, I screen record. If I get a press, like I do a TV spot and promoting something, I screen record it and then I upload it to IGTV. And I do that through the app. I use the IGTV app to upload the video content. It's a great way to practice just being on video. You know, if you want to talk about your tours or something fun you did around your community, a really cool place you visited, it's a great way to practice just being comfortable on video. And you, again, also with IGTV, you can share it to your feed or just have it in the IGTV realm and it won't show up into your feed. It's always recommended. Like if you show them in your feed, you get more views, but mine don't fit with my aesthetic mm -hmm. necessarily, or it's not content that's super related, but if it is, then I'll share it to my feed and you can add a cover photo as well. So that can make it a nice way to add your video. Got a quick message from one of our sponsors, and then we'll get right back to today's show. Stay tuned. Your search for the industry's best online reservation system is over. Fair Harbor enables thousands of tour and activity businesses across the globe with streamlined experiences that convert website visitors into paying customers to strategically increase online bookings and overall revenue. Their highly customizable cloud-based booking solutions are designed to be easy for you and your customers. Fair Harbor eases every aspect of your day-to-day -day operations through one easy-to-use dashboard. Options like custom seat maps and online seat selection can all be tailored to your unique needs, while capacity limits and contactless mobile ticket scanning help you maintain the latest safety protocols. All of this alongside Fair Harbor's best-in-class 24-7 support. Visit fairharbor.com to see why over 15,000 tour, activity, and attraction businesses choose Fair Harbor. What tools or apps do you recommend people use? So <laughs> I gather there's quite a lot out there. Yeah. Are there any favorites you have that you highly recommend people use? This is interesting because I, and this is not a great quality, I would say, but I don't pre-plan my posts. There are apps for that. And I'm not the one to tell you about those because I'm very spontaneous with my posts. Although sometimes I plan ahead. Like I know tomorrow I want to do food. The next day I want to do this, but I don't pre-schedule them in an app or any kind of content mm -hmm. uh, thing like Hootsuite or something. So I don't use those, but I do use video. Actually, I'm just going to check and make sure what I have here. Video sure. Shop is the video editing tool that I use to clip together video segments. For example, 
if I take video segments, but I want to make an IGTV video that's a minute long, but my original video segments are 10 to 15 seconds, I use Video Shop to clip those together to make a longer video. I use Lightroom for all of my photo editing. I do a lot of editing in Instagram, to be honest. I try to take good pictures to start with, but if I need to edit something, I use Lightroom Mobile, and I really like that. I use the Repost app, which I mentioned. If I'm going to repost something, I have the IGTV app. Those are probably the main ones. I do a lot just with my phone video and then right into Instagram. What phone do you use? I have an iPhone 12 Pro. Is it for people who really want to take Instagram seriously, would you say that's the minimum kind of version that they need? Or I had an iPhone 8 before this. I had an 8 Max or Pro or whatever it was. The camera quality was good on that one. Instagram is about the visuals. You want to have a good camera. Mm -hmm. And you can use a real camera, digital camera, and share it with Wi-Fi or something, share it to your phone. But phones nowadays take such great pictures. But the worst, you know, in my opinion, when you're especially like food accounts and you take dark, grainy pictures, it doesn't look appetizing. Why? (laughs) Why? That's my question. Why? So a great phone can do amazing things for your account. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a saying I learned this early on with Torpner about podcasters, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out. You know, my editor can only do so much, can't you, Carrie? <laughs> like we tested the levels right before we came on air and all of that because I wanted to make sure that the signal was clear. Uh, there's only so much we can do. You mentioned lighting. So when you're taking food pictures, for instance, are you using any kind of external lighting for that? The one thing I purchased along with everybody else this year is a decent ring light. I use it for when I do lives. So I have it like very cheap on Amazon, a small tripod, a clip for my phone, and like they call it a beauty light or a ring light, probably about eight inches in diameter. I use that for any kind of video content if I'm videoing myself doing something. Otherwise, I have decent natural light in my home and I just try to position whatever I'm taking a picture of near a window. If I know that I want to post something to Instagram, like I'm getting takeout and I have to take the picture in a takeout container when I get it, I do plan that in my day to make sure I'm going during a time when it's light outside. Excellent. Any other equipment that you use? I have a small ring light that I used to use when I do lots more like in restaurant food blogging at night. Like if we go do influencer dinners or something, I had a little ring maybe like a four inch diameter clip ring light that would attach to my phone. That was very useful for like restaurant shots. So light is kind of important, especially if you're out and about and it's dark. Other than that, I have two tripods. I have the one that's connected to that ring light that has the phone clip on it. And I also have one that has bendable legs. Actually, I have three tripods. So I have one that has bendable legs in case I want to attach it to like a handle or something like that. And I have one that is a counter clip that has a high, it's kind of like for overhead shots. So it has a very long, bendable, but strong arm. And then a clip for the phone so that if I want to do like a time lapse, which is super fun if you're plating something or like a cheese plate, then it holds the phone overhead. And again, these are like on Amazon for less than $20. Great. Thank you for that. And for our listeners that are tuning in today, if there's any apps or equipment you're using for your Instagram account, drop us a note and I will add those to the show notes and also add them into our group. I want to get on to some of our listener questions because these are all Shane's dumb questions about Instagram for dummies, right? (laughs) So Alice Bartlett asked, I've just been trying to figure out my Instagram account and the stories and reels and highlights would love an explanation. So we've just covered that one. Great. Jessica Hammer of Taste of Toulouse asks, how to be active and engage on social media without it completely taking over all your other work? I can't do my other things if I'm constantly replying to comments, liking posts, getting interrupted. Yeah, I feel her pain. It is part of your business, but it obviously can't take over when you have a lot to do. So I think responding to messages, I do answer my messages quite frequently. However, you could set aside a half an hour in the morning and maybe a half an hour at night, not just to reply, but to also send other people messages and comment on other people's posts, because that's important. That's part of that community building that we're talking about. Sort of need to set aside time and not make it take over your day. You got to put your phone somewhere else. <laughs> yes. And then, um, you know, set aside those times, have it be part of like, I'm having coffee and doing Instagram this morning, you know, or something like that. However, the other thing 
is that I think if we get back to the point of it doesn't have to be perfect, especially with stories. Like I just took that picture of my cat before I came on here. It took me probably two minutes to post that thing up and put a little poll on there and make it kind of engaging for people. So it, for me, has become just kind of part of what I do during my day. However, sometimes posts take me a very long time because they are very like from my heart and kind of what I'm feeling in that moment, or I'm like inspired by some restaurant I just went to, but that's part of my business. So it sometimes it takes a lot of my day. Yeah. But you can still get there. You can still show up consistently and build your community without being on it all day. It's just, I would say, maybe set aside a little time in the morning, a little time at night, so you can kind of catch up with everything throughout the day. Yeah, love that suggestion. She also asks, how to effectively plan for social media when it's usually my spontaneous Mm -hmm. posts that get the most engagement? Yep. I'm not the one to answer that question, clearly, Shane, because I am a spontaneous poster, but that's what resonates with people. We just talked about that too. It's like when you're posting from a place of passion or enthusiasm, those posts get recognized. And actually, sometimes they're the ones that you do in three minutes because that's all you had time for. It's really about you deciding like today I only have 30 minutes, but I'm going to show up to Instagram because that's on my schedule. So you know what? I'm going to go back in my feed. I'm going to take a picture that I didn't post or, you know, you can use a different view of the same picture you did. You don't have to always have extremely original content Yeah. and I'm going to post it and I'm just gonna make a little thing like, oh my God, I love pa- another night of pasta for dinner. What are you having? I mean, it can be very simple. And then those ones that you have those longer thoughts on. Sometimes I have like, I want to talk about this, but maybe not today. And I will write it in a note and then I'll be like, okay, tomorrow when I'm posting this picture, it's going to go with that thought I had. And I'll take a little more time to make sure my hashtags are good, make sure I'm tagging people, et cetera. Excellent advice. I also struggle. Sometimes I'll take a picture of something and I'll want to go on Facebook and post it. And I know what's going to happen. I'm going to go on there. I'm going to post it. I'm going to be checking for <laughs> likes, checking for engagement, then uh, oh checking other posts. And what I do each day is the night before, you know, in the evening, I will write out the three must-do tasks of the following day. And whatever happens, I have to get to those tasks. And if I've only done one of those tasks, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going on Facebook till I've done these other tasks because that's what I'd set myself. And that's how I have to discipline myself doesn't always work. (laughs) I try. Yeah. Part of it is self-discipline. And I actually have like a morning routine. I don't go on my, sometimes I'll do a quick check, like right when I wake up, I basically shut my phone off and don't engage until nine. And I do like my visualization, kind of what I'm planning for the day. I write my list for the day to make sure I'm getting off on the right start. That's a great idea, Shane. I like well, it. I admire you because I'm straight on my phone first thing. And I know I keep reading all this expert advice from people saying, no, when you get out of bed, like don't check your phone, you know, have your coffee or your green tea or whatever. And I like, just enjoy the start <laughs> of the day. But no, I'm straight on email and everything else. So that's really good advice. Robert FH writes, I've got lots of frustration with social media. How do I market to customers and not simply to people who are interested in pictures of my city? Hmm. That's a great question. And, you know, sort of the framing of that is interesting because some of those people interested in pictures of your city might become customers. I also think when we talk about marketing, this is just me personally. Some people feel very differently about this. You're selling your product just by showing up. And so I think showing up consistently, showing what you love about what you do is a great way, I think, to market your product. But the other thing is, and this is kind of a a fun little secret is, for example, me, I want to attract customers in Chicago. If I show something really great about Madison, maybe I'm going to start tagging Chicago Magazine. I'm going to tag Eater Chicago. I'm going to tag, I don't like over tagging like personal small accounts because that can be annoying. Like, why are you tagging me? I'm not in here. Mm -hmm. Hashtags, visit Madison, visit Wisconsin, Midwest vacations, Midwest getaways, things that people might be searching for if they're looking for something and they're living in the Midwest, wanting to visit somewhere else in the Midwest. So you can use hashtags, you can use tags. Again, I'd be careful just not tagging like small businesses that don't have anything to do with your post. But you know, if you want to attract customers, travel, um, tag travel brands that are bigger that you never know, maybe your picture will get reposted to one of those accounts. Yeah, solid advice. Challenge me on this if you like. But you know, I think we shouldn't be setting Instagram up just to get customers. Yes, that's what we want. Of course, we want the bookings flying through from social media, but it's about, okay, 
I'm not going to put this up and get an immediate, this is not like an ad in a newspaper for people who are coming to my city. This is something I'm building, which shows my brand. And that person who's looking at pictures of your city, of their city, when they have friends in town and say, look, I don't have time to take you for a tour, but I follow this really cool company on Instagram. They'll fix you up. They'll know where to take you to have the best food or the best history tour. So I think it's thinking of the bigger picture. As much as we all want it to be a direct yeah. conversion marketing tool, it's not always going to be like that. And it's also going to be a slow burner. I say this with SEO. Mm-hmm. You know, We write a lot of copy that Google might not pick up and put high in the rankings for six months to a year. It's like going to the gym. You don't just go one morning and we're here. You have a six pack, right? I wish that was the case. And if anybody knows that that's possible, do let me know. Sometimes you go for years and you don't get a six pack. (laughs) But you're closer to it. I agree. Yeah, it's that lot of work that you have to put into. I think also, Robert, what I'd say is I understand the frustration, but the other thing to bear in mind, and this ties in with your advice, Otelia, about consistency. If I look at a tourpreneur's Instagram and they haven't posted in months, leaving COVID to one side, then I'm thinking, oh, they're not operational. They're not engaged. Whereas if I go on someone's, I'm like, oh, wow, they're posting every day. Look, this looks fun. Then I'm more inclined to book with that company. So I think also, you know, if your competitors are more active than you, then that's a worry as well. Absolutely. And quickly, I would also say the hashtag is very important. You can use, I think, up to 25. I don't know. They change it sometimes. Use your hashtags. Use those hashtags. Put them in a comment or put them at the bottom of your post. If you post from Instagram to Facebook, maybe you want to put them in a comment so they don't show up in Facebook as well. So use your hashtags. That's going to get you visibility. The other thing I would say is that people have asked me this, and I don't think this is exactly a question, but I think it's important. People have said, what kind of customers do you get on Instagram? For me, Facebook and Instagram are very different. I get much more direct purchases on Facebook, and I use it far less. Instagram has been a visibility generator for me. So it's been a way I've gotten press out of it, people sort of knowing what I do. And news articles, you know, showing up in stories of local media, people asking for interviews. So it may not be direct for sales, but it's generated a lot of visibility for me. And I imagine, let's say I'm a brand new vendor in town and you've pitched me because you want me on your tour and I go check your Instagram and I see how engaged you are. That's another benefit where it's like, oh yeah, I definitely want to get involved with this tour. Whereas if you contact me and your Instagram hasn't been updated in a year, that's not good PR either. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I travel anywhere now, if I want to stay at an Airbnb or a hotel or I want to visit a restaurant, I'm looking at their Instagram. It's definitely going to help people make a choice when they do decide to book. Yeah. So Robert, I don't want to downplay your frustration. I hear it. This Instagram takes a lot of time, as you can hear in this episode, but there are other benefits to doing it. Jessica also asks how to tie social media metrics to concrete sales and other business KPI. You talk about insights, you can see what content is resonating, but are you able to match that up with any kind of sales metrics or? Not the same way you can with like a face. Well, unless you have your products, you know, you can sell right on Instagram. However, the insights can help But what I find is more so I'm like, oh, I shared this story. And now this person was like, oh, I want to bring my family on that tour. And then they do. And I know because they messaged me on Instagram or they tagged me on Instagram. So that's really where I see that. Absolutely. Amy McMahon asks, what's the deal with stories no longer being searchable? A few months back, I noticed that hashtag feeds no longer include stories. And so now I cannot figure out how anyone besides your followers can see your stories. Yeah, I'm not totally 100% sure about the stories not being searchable by hashtag. And again, Instagram does change things here and there. And they make, you know, features different for different people and different types of accounts. I believe if your account is public, just by when you go to your own story and swipe up with your thumb, you should be able to see all of the people who viewed your story, whether they follow you or not you know, where I would say, I'm not sure what kind of account she has, right? but you should be able to just see who is watching your stories based on swiping up. Sure. And I wanted to ask you about hashtags. So what's a good strategy? Because for myself, I read somewhere a while ago that you should put the hashtags in a comment below your initial post rather than putting the hashtags in your post. Was I correctly advised or? I don't think it really matters unless you're posting straight to Facebook, because again, the algorithm doesn't favor posts that are shared across platforms. They want original content, you know, so the idea is that you would not post straight from Instagram to Facebook, although it does make it easier 
So it really is the same. You can put it in the comments. Some people separate their actual message by several dots or something like that, and then put their hashtags. If your content is too long and it has in you know taken up all your characters you can use which is quite <laughs> quite a lot yeah. but i've done it before then you definitely have to put them in the comments sure i've done that because i read that piece of advice but then i thought well i don't want to block my post with all these hashtags either it looks a bit messy and clunky so i'll put it in the comment instead yeah you can do that i should just a b test it really shouldn't i and see if one gets more engagement than the other i'm kind of curious and i'll have to dig a little bit more into the hashtag and stories question because it may be that there is some way that you can search it but i'm not positive about that but i do know that it can be good to use hashtags in your stories because you get more visibility that way yeah so i don't know how exactly that's relating to the specific hashtags but they your stories will show up if you use hashtags so something we haven't touched upon today that i think is pretty important is some tips around setting up the bio and the profile what tips do you have for us on that thinking about the bio as your cell. It's like your cell point, right? You want people to know why they should come to your page. So trying to find something engaging, entertaining, short, and telling people what you offer. And then also it's limited to characters. If you have a brand specific hashtag, you can throw it in there and there's a place for a website or a link. I use Linktree which allows me to have multiple links because I don't have the swipe up feature. I don't have 10,000 followers yet. Yet. Um, you will after the yet, show but I'm, goes I'm out. I'm working my way. <laughs> Once the show goes out, we're all going to be following you because it's the best education is to watch. And I will say this to our listeners, go and sign up or follow Madison Eats and you can see everything that Atelier is doing. So you'll have 10,000 followers without a doubt. And I will follow back and share. So yeah, so I think that, you know, you want to make sure you have a place where people can reach you. So contact your website or a link to your different whatever site you're using hashtag and then really just an engaging quick something that's going to grab people's attention like oh i want to follow this person because they do cocktails on the go whatever i don't know whatever it yeah. is that you do climbing the tallest mountains from my phone or something virtually i don't know whatever it is that you do just kind of something that's going to engage people quickly in your feed. And then again, just those photos, make sure those pictures are good. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at your bio right now and it says guiding you to the best spots for local food on our number one rated food tours and culinary getaways, Madison, Wisconsin, Mexico, and Cuba. So I'd love to invite mm -hmm. you back mm -hmm. onto the show to talk more about your actual <laughs> business for those areas, but that's a very compelling bio. <laughs> and then I scroll down, I see the highlights that you've got here plus some wonderful looking food. Now I'm about to get hungry because uh, you've got some <laughs> stunning pictures on here. So make sure you've eaten before you check the profile. That's right. Is it lunch yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. That's really cool about the bios. What are some of your, as we wrap this up, and I know we could go for hours on this topic, and this was meant to be a bit of a primer, but what are some of your favorite Instagram accounts? Not necessarily in travel or peers, but what are some accounts that you really love and even inspire you? Okay, so I'm going to go kind of big to small because not all of us have a marketing manager or like a multi-million dollar business. However, Quick Trip is kind of local to Wisconsin. It's a gas station, kind of like a 7-Eleven or something like that. They have a hilarious feed, very like just kind of like upper Midwest dry humor and they have a marketing person and she's great. She does TikTok videos as well. She's a millennial for sure. But for like, okay, this is how funny you can be. Like to make a gas station fun, it's amazing. Again, another big account. I follow Chrissy Teigen. She's gorgeous, but also her stories are real. She's one of those people who just shows up as a real person doing her thing. Also get to see the glam of her life. So yeah. that's super fun. In terms of like, small business accounts that I really enjoy. Another food, fellow food tour operator, Frying Pan Adventures. Yes. I like following them a lot and they've done great. They're, they have a podcast as well. Yes. Her content has always been excellent. And even through this pandemic, kind of the same where she's just been trying to stay engaged with her community and she reshares other people. If they post about her, they tag her, she'll share, you know, about what they're doing. She is funny entertaining she shows her kid at home so i think she does a really great job mostly i see arva on there just of kind of keeping that engagement that i think is fun to watch and then the content on her feed is great as well a traveler that i follow that i really like is distinction travels 
Daniel is his name, and he is a travel blogger. His content is just very consistent, very great photos, like excellent, engaging travel photos and reels. And I've really enjoyed following him. So those are kind of like a variety of, <laughs> of accounts that from big to small or smaller, he's just growing a lot that I like to follow. I already follow Frank Pan, but I will add the others this afternoon because yeah, you know, I'm trying to always improve my Instagram. If anyone goes to my Instagram right now, you're going to laugh because it's pretty poor. I don't post consistently. I feel like I should check it out. <laughs> you can rip it apart. I mean, I have, but I should right now just to see what you're talking yeah. about. No, but the, the reason for that is quite frankly, when I set Torpner up, my goal was to travel one weekend mm -hmm. or a couple of days a month and like come to Madison, go on your tour, interview you in person, take a load of photos and share those on Instagram. And right now, because I'm a podcaster, all I can really do is take pictures of my podcasting gear. I mean, I could have done something fun like you did beforehand. I can do things with reels. I think I can have a 15 second video about, hey, on our latest episode, you're going to learn all about Instagram with Atelier, who's crushing it, something like that. But I definitely need inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I think once I get traveling again, I'll get more into it, to be honest with you. Otherwise, it's just going to be me, my dog, and my mic. <laughs> I feel like there could be a hole. That could yeah, be fun. Yeah. People like dogs. They do. So I have lots of work to do there. And what I would say to our listeners as well is if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, we packed a lot of advice into this almost an hour. Mm -hmm. I know there is a lot to Instagram. If you want to hire Otelia and get some audits done of what you've done so far or you need some help, then uh, we'll add Otelia's contact details to our show notes, which you can find at tourpreneur.com forward slash 148. And I always say this to our listeners, if you can afford it, go hire an expert to help you because that's the fastest way of flattening a learning curve. Mm -hmm. And what I love about you, Otelia, and why I was keen to invite you on the show is all anyone's got to do is go look at your Instagram feed and go, yeah, this person knows what they're doing. You're not some what I call empty suit guru with a $997 course out there that's never actually produced content for tour operators. You're on the front lines, you're in the trenches, you've done it. And I really urge our listeners that if they want to hire an expert, come contact you because you've got a proven record here. Thank you. I'd be very happy to help. I actually love it, which I think <laughs> is odd to some people, but I very much enjoy uh, Instagram. So I'm super happy to talk to people about any ideas, tips, tricks, and even, you know, help them to make a plan. Absolutely. And what one last request from me is I would absolutely love it if you created some kind of course for mm -hmm. tour operators because i have looked when it comes to instagram and also other aspects of social media i've looked and i see a lot of general like i've done facebook ad courses most of them are just not relevant to selling tours and activities for instance and i know you're busy with your food tour business right i mean that's number one but i would love at some point if you created a, a course for tour operators i think many of us would be interested in that yeah, I'm definitely planning on that. I have had more people ask me about Instagram. So it seems like a natural evolution and a good 2021 goal. So I should have something available. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, keep an eye on our feeds here at Tourpreneur. We'll definitely share that. Anything we haven't covered that you'd like to before we wrap up? I think we dug in pretty deep and I think I would just like to encourage people not to feel overwhelmed because there really is a lot and I have, still have a lot to learn as well, but just to take it a little bit, make maybe a goal to do something with Instagram differently or more than they're doing. So just take it a step at a time and have fun with it. Brilliant. Where can people find you online? On Instagram, I'm at Madison Eats. Otherwise, my business website is madisoneatsfoodtours.com. I'm located in Madison, Wisconsin. Those are the two places that people can find me most. Marvelous. Well, Atelier, thank you for giving us an hour of your time today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Shane. It was such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.